Igor is a 2008 animated film about a henchman to an evil scientist who wants to become an evil scientist of his own, but then he learns maybe he doesn't have to be evil. Now this came out in 2008, which is two years before Megamind and Despicable Me, four years before Wreck-It Ralph and the whole animated villain phase that we as a society had. So why, why didn't Igor stick? Why did we all forget about him? He, he should have been ahead of the game. Well, let's break it down. And first, I'd like to note that Igor is not available on any streaming services, and people maybe lesser than me would go to pirating, but... Go to your dang public library, people. They have so many, so many classics that aren't on streaming services that are just waiting for you. Your, your tax money isn't going towards nothing, okay? Now let's talk about Igor. So basically, Igor lives in a country where they make money by making evil inventions, and then other countries pay them to not unleash the weapons. So basically, this whole society revolves around people making evil inventions. And if you're born with a hunchback, that means you're an Igor, and you have to go to Igor school, and then become an Igor to a evil scientist. And of course, Igor is born with a hunch on his back, and so society places him into that role, but he wants to be something more. He wants to be an evil scientist himself, not just a henchman. That is, until one day, the evil scientist that Igor works for blows himself up, and he literally dies, and so Igor has to step up and secretly make an evil invention to submit to the evil invention contest, and prove the world that Igors can invent. And just, just to make sure I'm clear here, Igor is the name of the main character, but in Igor is also like a noun for just anyone with a hunchback who works for an evil scientist. They all have the name Igor, but this Igor is our protagonist. So basically, Igor wants to create life itself, something no other evil scientist has done. And he does, fairly easily. But here's the catch. Igor puts an evil bone inside of the monster's body. And the evil bone is activated when the monster does an evil deed. But the monster turns out just to be a very lovely woman who wouldn't hurt a fly. And so basically, she won't do anything evil to activate the evil bone. Igor and his pal's brain, which is a brain in a jar, and Scamper, who is a rabbit who is somehow immortal but also very suicidal. That's the joke. It actually comes off pretty well funny because it's, he's played by Steve Buscemi. I mean, come on. So basically, Igor and company take the monster to a brainwash, uh, which is like a car wash but for your brain, where they clockwork orange you into watching a bunch of brainwashing material like... The monster goes in and she's supposed to watch a bunch of people getting murdered and this will brainwash her into being evil. But instead, the channel gets changed uh, because Brain is dumb. That's that's his joke, Brain is dumb, because it's, it's ironic. Um, the channel gets changed and so the monster ends up watching an hour-long acting lesson. And then when the, the monster comes out of the car wash, she wants to be an actor. And then this is where Igor's like, no, you're supposed to be evil. And then she says, Eva. And so now the monster's name is Eva. As all of this is going on, there's another evil scientist called Dr. Schadenfreude, who basically has won the evil invention contest every year by stealing other people's inventions. And now he wants to steal Igor's invention of the monster and take credit as his own and then win the contest. There's like a whole car chase with a shrink ray and after Igor and company escape, that's when Igor learns that Eva wants to be an actor, not an evil monster. And Igor's like, no, you have to be evil. But so he comes up with this idea that he's going to trick Eva into thinking that the evil invention competition is an audition for the musical Annie. <laughs> and now Eva's on board. She's like, yes, I want to audition for Annie. And so then... She, Igor tries to teach her evil things under the guise of it being for her audition. There's like a whole montage where he learns that maybe, oh, maybe her being so nice isn't bad after all. And they really grow a connection between one another. Like Eva makes all of them gifts and to show her appreciation for helping her with her audition. 
and she's just overall very nice, so nice that it actually kind of softens up Igor into thinking, well, maybe uh, I don't want to be this evil person anymore. Hijinks ensues, and Schadenfreude is able to steal Eva away and activate her evil bone just in time for the evil invention competition. And so she's fully evil now because her bone is activated and she's just destroying all the other evil inventions because basically this competition is just battle bots. Like everyone's invention is just a robot that tries to destroy the other robots. So Igor and friends try to reach Eva before like she destroys everything. But along the way, they realize that basically there's a weather machine controlling the sky to make everything cloudy and dark and gloomy. So, he and his friends destroy the weather machine to make everything sunny again because the evil bone's one weakness is sunlight. And so if they get sunlight shining down on Eva, she'll stop destroying things and be nice again. This whole time is a, just a whole ploy by the king to have this weather machine and to trick everyone into thinking they have to be evil because basically the country's main source of income is that by, they, by threatening other countries, they're like, hey, we'll unleash our evil inventions on you unless you pay us $100 billion. And basically, yeah, that's how the country gets their money and how the king stays rich is by maintaining this whole evil shtick. But then once the weather machine is destroyed, the king, I think, dies. Yeah, he gets like fully crushed by um, the weather machine. And so the king is dead. And then Igor becomes the new king and is like, hey, guys, we can be nice to each other. We don't have to be evil. And then he starts uh, a play out like a community theater uh, to where uh, Eva can actually perform Annie. So, yeah, long story short, evil guy learns not to be evil. Also, um, Igor and Eva like end up romantically together by the end, which is sort of unsettling because you'd think it's more of like a parental a relationship that they have being that one created the other but no they're they're like dating fully um by the end now that we know what igor is about let's compare it to the other main three animated villain movies and to really see where he stands among them and to see if he really fits in first let's talk about their origins and how they really became an evil person in the first place. Starting with Megamind, he was an alien who crash landed on Earth, landed in a prison, and he grew up in a prison, and he got bullied at school because he just wanted to make cool inventions, but they ended up failing, and they got, we got bullied for it and punished for it and thought that he got told that he was a bad person and basically grew up to be a villain, while Metro Man, also an alien who grew up in like a rich house, and lots of friends, he grew up to be a hero, and the two of them sort of fight off. And that's his origin story. wreck it Ralph, basically he was just programmed to be a villain, um, and he's the bad guy in the video game, but within like the video game world, he's not really a, a bad guy. He's a sort of a social outcast because no one really wants to hang around the villain. And he, he wants to try and do good things, but it's really if society will accept him doing good things. And then there's Gru, whose origin stories are pretty unclear. There's not really a, a origin film about... Oh. I'm going to have to watch Minions Rise of Gru, aren't I? Okay, so I only watched the first, like, 20 minutes that had the most, like, Gru content in them. Basically, there is a supervillain team called the Vicious Six that Gru really wants to be a part of. He, like, idolizes the supervillain team because in this world, I guess supervillains are just kind of a big, like, mainstream thing, like celebrities. And also, I'm uh, superheroes are also, like... A, a mainstream thing like celebrities um, or it's like the anti-villain agency I don't know if they're called superheroes uh, but basically Gru as we've seen in other movies his mom sort of neglected him and he got bullied at school and so a kid like this I can see him really idolizing these super villains and wanting to become one of them now let's talk about Igor he was born and raised in a country where its economy like necessitates villainy like the way that the country makes money is through people being evil and so uh, he grew up because of the hunch on his back he was labeled an Igor and became an Igor forced to be an Igor and then yeah through that he works for an evil scientist but he wants to be an evil scientist of his own but let's talk about if any of these villains are actually 
evil. Starting with Megamind, I'd say it's a sort of maybe, because Megamind really only wants to hurt Metro Man. He doesn't really want to hurt anyone else, because basically once he does kill Metro Man, or he thinks he killed Metro Man, and he is like in control of the city, he doesn't know what to do next. He doesn't want to like torture people. He doesn't want to rob people. Well, I guess he does rob some things. But really, he doesn't cause that much suffering onto others. He basically only wanted to fight Metro Man, and that's what he learns throughout the movie, is that the two of them are kind of codependent and whatnot. So he's not that evil, and by the end, like, you know, defeats someone more evil than him, and is like, hey, I can be the good guy for once. And so, yeah, he's sort of in the middle ground, but basically not that evil. Then there's Wreck-It Ralph, who I'd argue just isn't evil at all from the beginning. He's just labeled a villain, and then is like, hey, guess what? Like, I can I cannot be a villain. Um, <laughs> and then and then he does. He, he runs away and, and learns that, you know, he, he, can, he can be whatever he wants to be. Then there's Gru, who I think is, like, the actually only evil person on this list, because as we see in the first, like, Despicable Me, is that he clearly gets pleasure from other people's suffering. Like, he pops kids' balloons, and he frees raised people, which could, like, you know, in the real world, like, kill them. And so Gru is, like, totally fine with hurting other people and doesn't see a problem with it. But then through the three girls, he's like, oh, maybe uh, I shouldn't be a bad guy anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the rest. And then with Igor, he's sort of the same situation as Wreck-It Ralph, where basically he, I don't think he's a bad guy. Like, he doesn't get pleasure from the suffering of others because his whole thing is that he just wants social status he doesn't want to be an igor he doesn't want to be treated like an igor he just wants to climb the social rankings and get respect from people and the only way to get respect is by being evil and making evil inventions and so there's this bit in the movie where eva runs away into a orphanage for blind kids and then you can hear screaming from inside and then Igor's like, oh no, she's killing blind orphans. And then Scamper's like, I thought you'd be okay with blind orphans dying. And you can clearly see that Igor is not okay with blind orphans dying. And he runs in to find Eva playing with the kids and they're screaming because they're having fun. So I guess at the bare minimum, Igor draws the line at blind orphans. But I think, you know, he he's a good guy who really doesn't want to see other people suffer. It's just that sort of only way to get that social status that he wants. I'd also like to point out that in Igor, Despicable Me, and Wreck-It Ralph, all three bad guys learn to be good through, like, having a, a relationship, whether that be romance, a friendship, or paternal, um, through girls slash women um and these female figures teach the man how to be a good person and one can argue in Mega Man, roxanne also does did i say Mega Man? and one could argue that Mega Mind, that roxanne teaches Mega Mind to be a good person but i i do think there are more more elements than just her at play in that movie so all four of these movies kind of share a common thread of person being bad or labeled as bad who goes on a whatever adventure and most likely meets up with a female side character who teaches them hey there's there's more to life you're more than just a label uh the break out of society's expectations of you and go do what you want and what they actually want is being a hero a good person so we've established that all four of these movies are fairly similar but why did igor flop while the other three movies really thrive first i'd say it comes down to the sort of ungodly animation style and these character designs i get it animation is hard and especially today animators should be paid good and work normal hours but still uh back in 2008 i mean uh like just the aesthetic of the movie i think is something kids don't want to see particularly and second i just think that it's too focused on being funny and not enough on the actual message that it's going for like basically this movie goes a joke a minute probably several jokes a minute 
because you have John Cusack, Sean Hayes, <laughs> and Steve Buscemi all just screaming all the time at whatever, uh, uh, I'll say it, unfunny jokes. Uh, <laughs> there's a part where they're just running and Brain sends he's on wheels. He goes, wheels don't fail me now. And then he falls over and he says, they failed me. <laughs> I think the best joke is just the shtick of an immortal being being suicidal. Um, they, they, that's what they say in the movie. They say the word suicidal multiple times. Um, and that sort of constant suffering, um, which I thought was funny. Uh, everything else, not as much. I mean, it's a pretty dark humor near the end where they make the blind orphans sing. We can see clearly now. So yeah, I think this... Overall, Igor was just too focused on the wacky animation style and the jokes that just constantly go on. I do remember as a kid, I must have owned Igor on a DVD because I remember watching it a lot, like multiple times, because while watching this this week, I was like, oh yeah, I remember like all of this stuff. And so, uh, hey, it has stuck on me that Igor stick to you do you remember it as a kid or have you never seen it at all and what i'm saying makes absolutely no sense at the end of the day i'd say igor is a villain movie just not a super one thank you for watching i got more halloween content coming out soon i know maybe people won't see igor as a halloween movie but i do because it's weirdly dark german aesthetic um, next video I have isn't necessarily Halloween themed, but it is about a new release coming to theaters. So be on the lookout for that next Friday. Also, thank you just for 100 subscribers. I know it's not a lot to some people, but it's a lot to me. It means a lot. So thank you, um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.